Electricity becomes noticeable only when it's missing. When you flip the switch to turn on the lights in the morning, do you ever wonder if this will indeed go on? Probably not. And it's because electricity in Switzerland has been reliable so far, but I'm here to try to convince you that you should be worrying about the Swiss electricity market. And why do we care about the security of supply in the Swiss electricity market? Basically because we want to avoid this, a blackout. But to understand this, uh, let me explain, explain to you something about the dynamics in electricity markets. In electricity markets, supply and demand should always match at any time. If supply doesn't match demand, there is a blackout. So if you don't have enough capacity, you have a blackout. And OK, if you don't have enough capacity, why don't you build more capacity? It takes a long time. For example, for a hydropower plant, up to 10 years. OK, what about decreasing demand? Electricity is part of our lives, and changing habits is not that easy. OK, now you might think, I don't consume too much electricity in the morning. Why don't you use this electricity in the evening where we all turn on the lights? This implies storing electricity, which is easier said than done. But how is this balance between supply and demand work? So let's suppose uh, we always take electricity from the cheapest producers. So let's suppose you own a nuclear plant. Do you agree? Okay. You have a hydropower plant and you have a gas plant. So you offer me 100 megawatt at 10 francs per megawatt. You offer me also, let's say, 100 at 20 francs per megawatt. And you offer me 100 at 30 per megawatt. Let's suppose I only need 250 for this hour. So I will take 100 from you, 100 from you, the hydro, and just 50 from you. The price for all of you will be 30 because this is the price of the most expensive producer. And this is done in electricity markets for each hour, for every day. Now let's suppose there is a new producer in the country, uh, someone that owns some solar panels. Since solar panels are subsidized, this guy only needs to charge the cost of the resource. What is the cost of sunlight? Zero. So let's suppose he can offer also 100 for free. Now I will take 100 from him, 100 from you still, and just 50 from you. I'm sorry. Now the price will be 20, because that's the price of the most expensive producer, the hydropower plant. So as you see, renewable energy displays the other energies to the right, so the same amount of energy, the same demand can be now covered by less expensive producers. This is why renewables lead to lower prices in electricity markets. Now, why Switzerland? This is the picture right now, very peaceful and convenient one. We have nuclear power covering 35% of demand, hydropower plants covering 60% of demand. There are very, very cheap import contracts from France, long-term import contracts, and the country used those contracts to cover mainly when demand is low and use hydropower plants when demand is high and prices are high to export to Italy. So life is perfect. But this might change in the near future because there is a heated debate in Switzerland right now about what to do with nuclear plants. And it's very likely all the plants will be decommissioned by 2000 in the next 30 years. So imagine, 35% just gone. Hydropower plants, the potential of these plants is very limited. 
not only because the best spots are already used, but also because uh, there is a strong opposition from people because of their ecological damage uh, in their construction. The imports, the import contracts I just mentioned, they are progressively expiring. They are not going to be renewed because they are very cheap. And uh, so they will no longer be available after 2040. And given all these uncertainties and the changes in the Italian market, we cannot be sure that these exports to Italy will remain as profitable. Okay, what about renewable energies in Switzerland, apart from uh, hydropower? The country is currently encouraging investments in renewable energies, mainly hydropower and wind power, mainly photovoltaic and wind power. But investment, investment costs are very high, so they need to be subsidized by government. And who pays for those subsidies? You and me in our electricity bills. Also, photovoltaics is great, but production depends on weather, and also you need electricity in the night. And everybody loves wind power, but nobody wants it in their backyard. So all these changes, all these transformations are expected to affect the electricity supply in Switzerland in the long term. And that's what we wanted to analyze. So what did we do? We built a model. We built a system dynamics model focused on the impact of the nuclear phase out, the expiration of these contracts, and a large penetration of renewable energies, mainly photovoltaics, which is the, the, the one that has the, the highest potential, on prices and on the supply in Switzerland. So the model has mainly two modules. In the first module, we simulate investment decisions. Investments are done if they are profitable. And profitability depends on prices. Prices are simulated in the second module, where supply and demand is uh, our balance. The main results of our models of our model are these. So we have in the vertical axis volume in terawatt hours and time in the horizontal axis. And the different uh, technologies, the, the production from different technologies. We assume the complete phase out by 2044 and that Renewable, uh, renewable energy will be subsidized until 2035 to reach the, um, the target uh, that the country has for that year. So the simulation give us that under market conditions, that means with simulated prices, the replacement of those solar panels that reach their lifespan after 2035 the replacement of those is not profitable. So that's why capacity of photovoltaics decrease after 2035. So the gap left by nuclear power is mainly filled by imports. As you see, imports increase significantly. And dependency on imports is not bad by itself. I mean, I don't doubt Switzerland will keep its good relationship with uh, all the neighboring countries, with France, Germany, and Italy. But if something happens, if there is a problem of supply in those countries, they will cut exports. They, will, they won't cut the supply for their own country. They will cut exports, including those to Switzerland. Now, how do these changes affect prices in Switzerland. Let's take the example, just a typical day in winter. So in 2015, uh, simulated prices are these. There are two peaks that match typically uh, the demand peaks. In 2030, capacity of photovoltaics is, is large, but there is only half of those import contracts are still available, and a third of nuclear have been already decommissioned. Consequently, because of the large 
uh, production of photovoltaics price increase in the afternoon, but increase in the evening, because those imports in the future are more expensive than those currently, because there are no contracts or there are few, fewer contracts in the future. Now, in 2050, there is less photovoltaic, uh, there is no nuclear at all, nor long-term import contracts, so price increase at all time. Can we say that the security supply in Switzerland is threatened? Yes, we can say so, at least in the long term. But we cannot claim that the elements of our model are the only elements we should consider when evaluating security supply in electricity markets. That's why we wanted to address the broader concept of security of electricity supply and uh, to look which are those elements that we need to consider. Based on literature, we found that there are 12 dimensions that we need to consider to evaluate or to do an assessment of any of security supply in any electricity market. Those 12 aspects are generation adequacy, resilience, reliability, supply flexibility, network infrastructure, import dependency, uh, demand management, sustainability, regulatory efficiency, access, social cultural factors, and terrorism. We propose metrics for each of them so we can provide a quantitative framework that allows uh, decision makers to follow the evolution of these aspects over time and to identify potential problems and to decide whether to intervene or not. So, as you can see, security supply is in danger. Electricity markets, and in particular the Swiss one, are facing very strong transformations that might affect this, uh, our electricity supply in the future. So, I'm sorry to say that we cannot longer take electricity for granted. Thank you.